Shalom Chavarim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very troubling news coming out of Syria today. According to one Russian source, riafan.ru, they're reporting in their headlines here, giving an update of the war situation throughout Syria. And in this report here, in the very headlines itself, is mentioning three U.S. soldiers that have been killed in Syria today, as of June the 18th. Uh, 6 a.m. this morning, according to the article here. As you go on down into here, they're claiming here that ISIS was the ones that actually killed the soldiers there and have wounded about seven other U.S. soldiers. I'm going to take you to an English translation of this article here. Uh, the article, the headline of the article, Syria results for the day of June 18th, 6 a.m. ISIS lost 14 settlements near At uh, Tabaka. The radicals killed three U.S. soldiers, speaking about ISIS. Syria, June 18th, the militants of ISIS, or IG, lost control of the vast territories of the west province of Raqqa. VKS Russian destroyed a convoy of terrorists in the Palmyra era. Radicals uh, IG killed three U.S. servicemen on the outskirts of the city of Raqqa, according to military source of the federal news agency in Syria, Ahmad uh, Marzouk. Briefly about the outcome of the confrontation, the Syrian Arab army and the allied forces conducted massive skirmishes with militants in the East Gut and the outskirts of Damascus, lost about 40 soldiers during the clashes with the Islamists in Dada. So they're kind of giving you an overall view throughout the country of what's going on. Uh, but the bad thing is, is that we have seen now, according to this report here, three U.S. servicemen have been killed. Now, I've not seen any report in U.S. media as of yet regarding this loss of life. As you move on down into this paragraph here, it says ISIS lost 14 settlements in the western part of the province of Raqqa, lost a column of equipment and dozens of fighters as a result of the bombings of the Russian Air Force in eastern east of Palmyra. Now that's what we were speaking about the other day, 180 uh, supposedly loss of life there with two commanders being killed by the Russian Air Force in the vicinity of Deir Azor in the district cities of Akrabat and Sal Salamia killed three American soldiers and wounded six more in Raccoon. It lost over the territories around the summit of Tabarat al-Diba uh, in the east province of uh, uh, Kahama. Uh, very serious, very troubling situation there. If you go on down into the report itself here in the Russian language, they also mention that there are about seven wounded uh, U.S. soldiers as a result of the fighting that is going on inside of Syria there. Uh, and of course, just kind of taking a quick look at the map right here, um, we can we know that according to you have Al, uh, Al Raqqa, which is this region right here. This is supposedly somewhere between here and the Azor, where the three U.S. soldiers have been killed. Again, we don't have a second source for confirmation on this as of yet. I will continue to look for that to see what we can find out, but this is being reported by Russian news agency as of right now. Uh, moving on into other news as well, just to kind of show you some of the things that we've already been talking about, that the U.S. was intending to try to draw Iranian forces into a war to justify a war on Iran. Well, Yahoo News is bringing out this article here, White House officials push for widening the war in Syria over Pentagon objections. Uh, states right here, White House officials, um, that uh, a pair of top White House officials is pushing for broadening of the war in Syria, viewing it as an opportunity to confront Iran and its proxy forces on the ground there, according to two sources familiar with the debate inside the Donald Trump administration. Ezra Cohen Watnick, the senior director for intelligence in the National Security Council, and Derek Harvey, the uh, NSC's top Middle East advisor, want the United States to start going on the offensive in the Syria and southern Syria, where in recent weeks the U.S. military has taken a handful of defensive actions against Iranian-backed forces fighting in support of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Their plans are making even traditional Iran hawks nervous, including Defense Secretary James Mattis, who has personally shot down their proposals more than once, the two sources said. The situation in southern Syria has escalated in recent weeks after a U.S. warplane shot down an Iranian-made drone that had attacked U.S. forces on patrol with Syrian allies near an American outpost at al Tant. The drone attack came after two U.S. airstrikes on the Iranian-backed Shiites militia. Well, guys, it didn't end there either. Let me tell you what. Iran has once again stepped up the ante in an article here coming out on foreign policy 
Agency.com, Iranian-backed militias employed drone against U.S. forces in Syria. Uh, I take that back. That is actually an old article. That is from the June 8th. This is what the article was talking about there is when the U.S. actually shot down that drone. It was on June the 8th. My apology for that. At any rate, though, it's still we are looking here and the article here is June 18th here on the Russian article here that is claiming that three U.S. servicemen have been killed inside of Syria in the fighting. Uh, and there's different conflicting reports as far as exactly what area this is. It does state in the article that it is around Raqqa. Also, Dara Zord, uh, when it speaks about the wounded, they're not exactly sure which Americans were wounded and where they were wounded at, but they are claiming that three U.S. servicemen have been killed inside of Syria along with the fighting. And of course, the fighting, they were killed, according to the report here, by ISIS forces. Very troubling news indeed. Uh, and it seems like, as President Putin often says as well, they must join forces together to bring down ISIS. You cannot sit there and expect these terrorists that have been so backed by uh, the former administration, the Obama administration, and trying to overthrow Bashar al-Assad. Uh, you can't expect it to be anything other than a radical group there. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Don't forget that this type of broadcast is a blessing to you. Not to say that the war is a blessing. Nothing's a blessing about war. But if our work here is a blessing to you, keeping you up to date, we can't do it without your support. And we desperately need your support, especially this time of year. Uh, consider donating. You can do it right here on our channel, just above the subscribe button on Israeli News Live YouTube, or go to our website, IsraeliNewsLive.org. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.